Thank you, Madam Chair, and thank you for holding this important hearing. I'm sure that the chair has probably grown weary of how many times I bring <laughs> up cybersecurity, both in our negotiations on an energy bill now almost two years ago and the need to be more expeditious about the process and my continued concern about it from the perspective of one of the greatest threats facing our nation. So I am delighted to have the panelists before us today to focus on what our nation needs to do to be more expeditious in our agenda on cybersecurity. Obviously, cybersecurity, as it impacts our energy infrastructure, is one of the key issues for this committee. And it is one of the things that we now used to say that we were worried about foreign entities entering our airspace, our shipping lanes, or any kind of unwanted provocations, now they come in the form of cyber attacks. So make no mistake, our nation's energy infrastructure is under that attack from Russians and other state actors. We know according to the Ukrainians, Russia took, part, uh, took out part of the Ukraine electricity grid in 2015 and 2016 through cyber means. Wired magazine at the time, chillingly suggested that the entire nation of the Ukraine was becoming a Russia test lab for cyber war. As one of our witnesses uh, uh, will say today uh, about the Dragos, I, I, I should have uh, you know, said as it relates to the leadership there that Russian government had devised a cyber weapon that had potential to be one of the most uh, disruptive yet against our electricity system. So we look more forward to hearing more on that. In uh, the last year, the Washington Post reported that the Russian government hackers were behind cyber intrusions into a nuclear power plant and business system. So we know from our own Northwest lab that the firewall that protects much of our information, they have uh, communications of something like 25,000 a day cyber attacks against that system. So we know what is happening, and as the chair mentioned, we know that the administration has set up a cyber office, which we appreciate, but we want the administration to be much more aggressive. We have been pushing for over a year now on asking for a threat assessment to our electricity grid. I think it was June 22nd, 2017, that we wrote the White House asking them to perform a required assessment on protecting the grid from cyber attacks. And I know, Mr. Walker, you're here today, and you will try to enlighten us on the work that you've been doing in your short period of time, while, uh, which is uh, a lot, just given the Puerto Rico situation, so we appreciate that. But nonetheless, we want the Department of Energy to respond to this letter of a year ago asking them what we are doing to protect the reliability of our electricity grid from Russian hacking. This was sent by uh, many U.S. senators, and we have yet to have a response. Why is this so important? We see just this morning the German government was hacked by Russian actors. According to the German Interior Ministry, we can confirm that the Federal Office of Information Security and Intelligence Services uh, were part of a cyber hack. So this issue is not going away. It's only growing in incredible importance. We don't want to have an administration asleep at the computer terminal while we're sitting here worrying about American business and government interest and national security interests being attacked by state-owned actors. I also hope that we can see, as we specifically asked Secretary Perry during his confirmation hearing, that the administration will support a robust infrastructure investment as it relates to cybersecurity. I know he told the committee at the time that he believed that we should do that, and we want to see in this next budget legislation that commitment. I know that the chair and I had a chance to talk to the president uh, at an infrastructure discussion uh, a couple of weeks ago, and we emphasized how much energy infrastructure needed to be part of a national infrastructure investment bill. So now is the time for action. We also discussed, and uh, the chair and I have in legislation put a clear focus 
on how important workforce is to a critical energy infrastructure for the future, including cybersecurity. Our state, uh, the state of Washington, has been a leader in developing a cyber workforce training, and I'd like to welcome Professor Barbara Indicott Popovsky to testify today. She is the executive director of the Center for Information Assurances and Cybersecurity at the University of Washington, a national leader in pioneering cyber education. We were able to have a forum there recently uh, to see how business education and uh, the cyber community was coming together to try to focus on cybersecurity solutions. Uh, she has been shaping cybersecurity education policy and has authored more than 100 peer-reviewed articles, so we welcome what you have to say today uh, on this issue. She recognizes that I do, that one of the biggest challenges to the nation's cyber preparedness is a skilled workforce that by 2020, IBM estimates that there will be 1.5 million unfilled cybersecurity positions across all industries. That's mind-boggling, mind-boggling to think about. But not hard to imagine, given that we live in an information age and how connected everything is going to be and how every layer will also need security and reinforcement. So I hope that today's hearing will help illuminate for us how much investment we really need to make to make that part of our energy infrastructure work cost effectively. We know that some of the challenges that we face is getting that curriculum well established and also making sure that different aspects of the cybersecurity challenge are addressed everywhere from just two-year degrees to PhDs. I do think the Department of Energy has a role to play here in defining uh, for individuals uh, interested in this area the partnerships that uh, will be necessary to skill that workforce in a timely fashion. So all in all, Madam President, I mean, uh, Madam Chair, thank you so much for the hearing today. Thank you for uh, the attention to this issue. I know you and I keep hoping that there'll be some cybersecurity legislation <laughs> that moves through the um, full Congress as it has already moved through the Senate. So maybe, um, I don't know, I don't know if third time's the charm, time. but, but hopefully we will be able to use these very important events that have transpired across the entire world to get our colleagues to see the urgency of this situation. So again, thank you for the hearing.